So we're talking about inherited IRAs or specifically the beneficiaries of inherited IRAs. And the IRS just came out with a memorandum or a ruling uh, number 54 right here. Uh, and so we're going to talk about what this means. It's in the press. It can be confusing. And so this only applies to certain beneficiaries. But in effect, it applies to anybody that has an IRA. If you care about your beneficiaries, then you're going to want to do some planning based upon this. So I want to bring Tom on, and I really want Tom to articulate, like, why are we talking about this today? Why is this subject up? Yeah, we're talking about this today because uh, in the SECURE Act that was passed a couple of years ago, there was a fundamental change of how IRAs were inherited by individuals. And you need to understand this, one, if you're inheriting the IRA, but two, if you're the one leaving IRAs to eventually your beneficiaries. And so what we want to do today is really define what they are, talk about the differences, and sort of go into the notice that was released back in, in July. Why don't you bring the show notes up, Tom, and just show them where we have documentation of everything that we're talking about today. Yeah, so you can find these show notes in the, the link below of our video. They're also on our website. Um, the, the bulk of the show notes, and I don't necessarily, if you want to read the notice, go for it. It's, it's very um, you know, difficult to get through if you're not a you know, a lawyer or an IRS kind of nerd, but, you know, again, again, it's just the, the notice that was released back in July. It's quite long. It talks about the, the they essentially waived some RMDs. We'll talk about that in a second, but then it goes through there. Probably what I would find the more important part of the show notes is this last page in there. This, this is a document I use daily in, in our practice. It's sit here, it's right on my desk. And it's a very good sort of one page summary of the different types of beneficiaries. And so if you're inheriting IRA or you've inherited IRA in the past and you're not sure which one of these you fall into, go to this page. You can sort of identify which group you fall into and see what the rules apply to you. OK, so what we're going to go over next is if the IRA owner who passed away and left the IRA to you as the beneficiary and the death was 2020 or after. So it's under the SECURE Act. If it was 2019 or before, what we're going over in this video basically doesn't apply to you. So those of you that inherited several years ago and you're now doing minimum distributions, you're under a different set of rules. So that's the person who owned the IRA passed away they left it to you as the beneficiary, and now you need to determine which category of beneficiary are you under the SECURE Act. And the notice that just came out applies to people in this middle group. But let's just go through really what the left group is with the middle group and this group. So the left group is what they call an eligible designated beneficiary. So these are people who have certain characteristics that are listed under the rule. They are able to stretch out the distribution of the IRA over their remaining lifetime. That's really what an, being an eligible designated beneficiary is all about. So when they passed the SECURE Act, what they were doing here is they were trying to accelerate or get that money taxable within so many years after the person dies. I mean, they, the, the, the government and the budget and the tax people, they've, you've avoided taxes or the person that owned the IRA avoided taxes or postponed them on the, for their whole lifetime. Then they passed away and then the IRS has got to wait years to collect their tax because they spread it out in little bits over their lifetime. So the SECURE Act was about fixing that. And it was about accelerating it so they get their tax money within a 10-year period after the death of the owner. That's really what it was all, all about. But they carved out this special category of people who might need the income from it over their lifetime, such as the surviving spouse. So they said, you know, if, if you have an IRA, you pass away, you make your spouse the beneficiary, which most people do, your spouse survives. They can stretch it out. They got a whole lot of options, but they are fall into this category. 
minor children of the owner, and that doesn't include grandchildren. Okay, so the minor children uh, of the deceased owner can stretch it out over their lifetime, but then when they reach the age of majority, they flip over here and they fall into the 10 year rule. Disabled individuals, and that's under strict IRS rules. So if you have a disabled adult child, they can stretch out the IRA uh, distributions uh, over their lifetime. A chronically ill person, which is basically needing long-term care, and then individuals not more than 10 years younger than the IRA owner. This is pretty much for the brothers and sisters or partners where they weren't married. So when the, when the beneficiary is about the same age as the deceased owner, they're going to create a special category where that person can again stretch it out over their lifetime. So I'm going to, I'm going to make the point. I'm going to make the point on that one as well okay. is the 10 year younger is not talking about spouses. So a spouse that's more than 10 years younger, that's fine. So that still falls under that surviving spouse line. It's because I've had that question before. My spouse is more than 10 years younger. Where do they fall? They fall under the surviving spouse. So it doesn't matter about the age difference. That 10 year difference is really for non-spouses that are 10 years younger. So those of you that are planning IRA beneficiaries on your own IRA, I mean, and you want your beneficiaries to be able to stretch it out, well, then you're going to do some planning around, they're going to stretch out the distributions over their lifetime or longer than 10 years. You're going to want to do some planning to leave your money to these individuals. Okay. And then everybody that's not one of these individuals falls under the middle, the designated beneficiary. And that's what the change is about. We're going to talk about the change in just a sec but you got to be clear on who it applies to. The designated beneficiaries are going to be adult children, grandchildren, uh, other people, because you can put down just about anybody as your beneficiary that are more than 10 years younger than you. And then more than 10 years younger than the owner, they're going to fall under the 10 year rule. And what that really says, is you can take all the distributions you want during the 10 years or not. You can wait till the very 10th year and then you got to take it all out. What this is really saying is it all has to be distributed. The IRA has to be emptied by the end of the 10th year. So, and people who do that, by the way, are creating a tax bomb just 10 years forward because it's going to have a bunch of growth and interest and all that kind of thing. And they're going to have a huge amount come onto their tax return. Okay. Now, this category over here is the non designated beneficiary. And these are not people. And this is pretty much unchanged under SECURE Act. And if you leave your IRA to an entity like a trust or a charity or an estate, it's going to fall under the five year rule where they got to distribute it and it has to be emptied over five years. And there's no special uh, considerations on that. So for the purposes of this video, you're trying to decide if you're a, a beneficiary, whether you're here or you're here. And most people end up here and you're falling under the 10 year rule. But then they added something more. And they did this back in 2022 in the beginning, the IRS ruled on the SECURE Act and they said, Okay, and it's actually, they did it in 2021. And they said that your uh, minimum distributions during the 10 years, you still have another minimum distribution that you need to take under the 10 year rule if the IRA owner had already started minimum distribution. So if the person who died is older than 73, or 72 when they died and they had already started minimum distributions, you now have a minimum distribution each year during the 10 years. And it's based upon your life expectancy. And, you know, it's a smaller amount if you're down in your forties or fifties or sixties, but it's still 
you can't just leave the money sitting there, take nothing, and then wait till the end of the 10th year. You got to take something. And, you, and there's a calculation that's fairly complicated. And if somebody died in 2020, you were supposed to take a minimum distribution in 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, and so on and so forth. And then at the 10th year, you have to empty it. Okay, so that's, a, that's like a, a little footnote here of people that had started RMDs. Okay, that's what the IRS just said, is they said for 2023, if you're the beneficiary, you're a designated beneficiary, you're under the 10-year rule, and your IRA owner was over 73 or 73 or over when they died, and they had already started minimum distributions, they're saying, and so you have a minimum distribution due in 2023, what they've just said is you don't have to take the one for 2023. I mean, that's it. So they've given relief to a very narrow group of people. And we want to communicate that not only to those people, but if you read all this stuff in the news, because I've read all the articles, this thing has been out at the time of this taping about three weeks, two and a half weeks. And so I've read all the stuff in the news and I saved it and I reread it getting ready for this video because I want to hear how the national press is communicating this. And they're pretty much accurate, but it's just how they go around and go about this. It was pretty confusing to me, um, but that's what it is. It's a very narrow category of people, designated beneficiaries under the 10-year rule where the owner was 73 or over, it started minimum distributions. And now in the first, every year during the 10 years, there's a small minimum distribution that has to be taken. And the IRS has now just waived that for 2023. And so I want to bring Tom back on and I want to just see if you have comments on this, Tom. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, the reason they've waived it is there's been a lot of confusion around this because when the Secure Act was first passed, everyone sort of read it. And the way it read was that you have to distribute by the end of the 10th year, but you didn't have to take RMDs, you know, throughout that time period, if you meet all these criteria. And they came back and, and sort of clarified that there was a, a proposed regulation saying, no, nope, you do have to start taking RMDs over the next several years. So there's a lot of confusion. And so they've essentially waived it the last couple of years to try to, you know, Make sure they're not penalizing people for something that they recognize has been somewhat confusing. The point I would make, though, is even if you qualify for this ability to waive the RMD, that's not always the best idea anyways, because you're just deferring the problem. That end of the 10 years, that has never changed. That is very clear that that account has to be emptied by the end of the 10th year. And so if you're only taking the minimum and then you get to waive it for several of those years, you know, you're just deferring the problem where in the future, you're going to have to take a big lump sum out and pay a whole lot of taxes. And so even though they waived it, oftentimes we're recommending clients take more than the minimum anyways, because we want to spread those distributions out evenly over those 10 years to minimize the tax impact. And so, I mean, I think that's one thing just to, even though they're going to let you waive it and they're not going to penalize you if you missed it, you still probably should take even more out than what that minimum would be otherwise. And the other point I want to make is it is very important to know the differences of these. If you're if you're inheriting an IRA, you need to sort of identify which category you're in, figure out what rules apply to you. If you're the person who is the owner of the IRA and you're looking forward to who's going to inherit this, these rules are very impactful for what you're leaving to, you know, generally your kids. And so there's a lot of planning that needs to be done while you're alive to minimize the tax impact on your kids if that's important to you. So, um, I mean, it's again, it's, it's important to know these rules if you're inheriting the IRA, but also important to know if you're the owner of the IRA, let's try to make this better off for the, the beneficiaries and leaving them with this big account that they have to 10 years to distribute. And then they're going to get hit with the massive taxes if they wait to the end of the 10th year. Well, I could tell you what we've done for a few beneficiaries is let, let's say a person inherited $100,000. And then in an, a traditional IRA, they're the beneficiary, they're under the 10-year rule. 
They come to us looking for advice. How much should I take out? Uh, how much should I leave in? What should I have it invested in? And, you know, a simple way to minimize the tax effect would be to take out 10000 a year for 10 years. I mean, that ignores interest. Or take out 10% a year for 10 years. And we have some products that are set up that'll pay you an interest rate. They'll just send you a check every month for the 10 years. And so for 120 months, you're going to get a check every month and you're going to qualify for all of this stuff. If you want to hear about something like that, call us. You also, if you're the IRA owner, you, we can set up your beneficiaries so that it'll pay out to their kid, to your kids in an evenly spread out way because adding $10,000 of income to your tax return in any one year is a whole lot different than adding 100,000 plus interest to your tax return in one year on top of your other income. So um, there's some planning that's called for. I hope you folks have learned something with this. Okay, within the scope of the seven worries, we've planned out, we talked about the category of 401k IRA. We've talked about income. We've talked about a state. And we talked about taxes. I'm Hans Scheil, and I thank you very much for listening. Thank you.